Hello and good day to you guys. This is Jesse here, and I wanted to take the time and say thank you all for giving me the 250 plus subscribers I have today. I know it's one thing to click into a random video, watch it, and then move on, but the fact that so many of you have decided to stick with me makes me feel validated, like I must be doing something right. Today I'm taking a look at some bizarre bootlegs for the NES as requested by JB Newell. A few of these shameless ripoffs have actually received patches from the ROM hacking community, making them a bit more enjoyable compared to their original form. I don't personally enjoy bootlegs that are so far from the mark that they're broken or offensive to the senses, so these will be, in no particular order, what I consider to be decent, or at the very least playable, and worth checking out. We'll take a closer look after the break. This first bootleg is pretty well known by now, but is still a fascinating curiosity. So Mari, created by Hummer Team, is a peculiar 8-bit conversion of the original Sonic the Hedgehog, only it features Mario as the lead character. There doesn't seem to be any concrete information regarding a release date, but its Taiwanese trademark was registered in 1994. So Mari is thought to be based upon extracted source code from Sonic 1 that was reverse engineered and then ported to the NES. In execution, however, it leaves a lot to be desired. When I first discovered this as a teenager, I thought it was hilarious seeing Mario flail his arms and roll into a ball. The novelty wears off rather quickly though, thanks mainly to their horrendous and sloppy controls and a laughably poor soundtrack. Still, I have to give credit where it's due for such an ambitious and surprisingly faithful bootleg. Of course, a hack was eventually released, which replaced Mario with Sonic, but other than that, very little was changed. Then something wonderful happened in late 2016. ROM hackers The Jabu and TI hacked the hack of a bootleg, greatly improved the graphics, the controls, and the audio, showing the full potential of Sonic running on Nintendo's legendary system. This specific hack is titled Sonic the Hedgehog NES Improvement Plus Tracks, and I've enjoyed playing it so much I ended up flashing it onto my NES Classic. Even at a glance, the difference is just staggering. Look how much effort went into this. But most importantly, now it's actually fun to play. Trust me when I say you owe it to yourself to play it, as it's a total joy to experience. This next bootleg, titled Kart Fighter, was also created by Hummer Team, and while it may seem like it plays off the idea of Smash Brothers, it actually predates it. You could even argue that it might have influenced the creation of one of the best fighting games ever made. Well, heh, <laughs> you'd probably be wrong, but still, Kart Fighter is quite obviously influenced by Street Fighter, but fighting games aren't exactly common on the NES, so it's kind of nice to have more options. The large sprites and impressive stages are colorfully detailed, and the gameplay is actually kind of fun. Each character has special attacks, and the controls mostly work how they should. Character names are either misspelled or taken from their Japanese originals, and the music is kind of grating, but I think this bootleg is decent enough to get a mention. A patch has been released by DVD Translations, which gives everyone their proper American names, plus a few graphical changes that have been made to improve the experience. While not exactly a must-play bootleg, Kart Fighter is worth a play if you fancy yourself an occasional oddity. Number 3 on our list is yet another release by Hummer Team. Seriously, these guys really knew how to churn out their unauthorized games. Super Mario World on the NES sounds like a great idea. After all, it had simplistic graphics to begin with, and with slower paced gameplay when compared to Mario 3, this demake seems like a slam dunk. This bootleg does a remarkable job of featuring most elements which made the SNES launch title so memorable, but as with other Hummer Team releases, the graphics, audio, and controls are all a bit off. Sprites, while recognizable, aren't drawn very well, specifically Mario himself. The music is annoying, but tolerable. Movements feel stiff yet slippery at the same time. On the plus side, the cape, fire flower, and Yoshi are all here. You can even play with a second person, taking turns of course. Some levels have been cut from this version, but that's to be expected. Overall, this is quite an admirable effort. As with Samari, a patch was created by the Jabu which polishes the rough edges, fine-tuning the gameplay and graphics, and making the overall experience more consistent and enjoyable. It's not complete yet, and it's a shame the music hasn't been improved, but I think it's quite fascinating that people out there will actually take the time and effort to make a mediocre bootleg into something more worthwhile. 
Super Mario World for the NES is good, but not great. Play it with the patch to get the most enjoyment out of it. And here's a bootleg that's probably not made by Hummer Team. Super Donkey Kong 2 is an attempt to replicate the Donkey Kong Country 2 experience on clearly inferior hardware. The actual developer is unknown, but it was published by NT and released in 1997. While there is a Super Donkey Kong 1, it's not as polished as its successor, so I'm not going to talk about it in this video, but might another day. The graphics, gameplay, and audio are all very well done. You can tell a lot of effort was put into making this feel like it's 16-bit inspiration. You can only play as Diddy Kong, so one hit by an enemy and you're dead. Several key elements are present, such as the Kong letters and the gold target at the end. You can even play as Rattly, the snake animal buddy. The biggest problem with this game is the length, and it's a big issue. The whole thing is over by the end of the third level. The final screen is basically the same as if you've gotten a game over. I was so disappointed to find there's no real way around it. How can there be shoddy bootlegs that deliver a more lengthy gameplay experience, but when an attempt is made of this quality, it just ends after less than 20 minutes? Good things aren't meant to last, apparently. The last game in this video is probably the most ambitious. Final Fantasy VII for the NES, as hard as it is to believe, is a real thing. Developed by Shenzhen Nanjing Technology in 2005, it's very well known today. I haven't completed it yet, but it's incredibly faithful and well done. At least, it is if you apply the translated improvement patch. You see, there were tons of things wrong with the original bootleg, most of it being the recurring theme of subpar graphics, music, and gameplay. Released by Lugia 2009, there are so many fixes on the whole that I can't even begin to list them all. Let's just say that everything fixable was fixed. The characters look more like themselves, the gameplay has been tweaked, and the music has been completely redone. This patch was over four years in the making, and boy, does it show. If you're a fan of the classic 2D Final Fantasy games, this is positively something to give a chance. That's all for now guys. As always, I welcome your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. Thumbs up or subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it. I appreciate your support, and until next time, keep on gaming.